Hey folks, welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3, where last time we explored Bloom Ridge Park and managed to evade an assassination attempt by a hit squad sent by Orin. We're going to resume exploring the lower city here and see what we find. Starting out, we've got some refugees. Apparently, there's some items inside this house that we can't quite... We kind of saw through the walls for a second there. Uh, let's make our way down alongside the wall here and see who else we meet. Got some sort of murals on the wall and over here, Splatter's Doolug and Slady Marvin. It's street art. If you don't like it, you can literally walk away. Uh, I quite like it, actually. Oh, well, that's nice to hear. Thanks. You're welcome, Splatters. What's he got here? He's got... Looks like a druid bard. And... A drunken, dancing, bearded person? What does Slady think about his art? These artist types are always so soft, aren't they? You make one little comment and their egos crumble to dust. Okay, a critic on the streets of Baldur's Gate. We have another house over here, Laura's home. Is that to be a property of Laura Burgors. Due to family circumstances, we are not accepting visitors at this time. All right. Uh, the door's not locked, but they're not accepting visitors. Let's see what's in the mailbox. An overdue reunion. Laura, are you bloody keeping? Myself and the boys will be making port in a ten day, and we thought it high time we all had ourselves a few goggles in the blushing maid. And we ain't taking no for an answer. How's the little one? Bet she's tall as myself now. My own boy outstripped me last year. They grow up so fast, don't they? I know you're up here in the city, but damn if we don't miss you on the liberty. Boarding civvies ain't the same without quick lit Laura. Yours fearsomely, Tim Two Fingers. Sounds like she's an ex-pirate with a child. I know they're not accepting visitors, but I really want to go inside so bad. Let me just crack the door here and take a peek. Is anybody inside? No. No real evidence of criminality. And a trusting soul with the door unlocked. All right, we don't have a reason to be here, so let's go ahead and close the doors and move on. Let's see what else we can do. Uh, down here we have a couple of folks talking. Are these children? Yeah, it looks like Farnilla and Dellis are having a conversation. Look, pal. You want a broadsheet? You'll have to wait. I'm taking my break. You got a problem with that? Talk to the Gazetteers Guild. I got rights, you know. Okay, a newsboy on a break. And Farnilla. Sorry, we can't sell you the broadsheet yet. Got to take my stinky break first. Boring. Hmm. I would be interested to make my way back to the, uh... The, the Baldur's Gate Gazette, the Baldur's Mouth Gazette, to see the reaction to our new printed story. We know it's been printed by now. Uh, what we don't know is how it was received by the, uh, <laughs> the propaganda artist masquerading as an editor. Uh, we do have an open crate here we can check. Just some rags. And then we can go inside this little area here. Okay, what do we have here? A rotten tomato, a lamp, and not much else. Okay. Heading back towards the parts of the city we've already explored, we can see there are some refugees. Get your mind control charms here. A civilian and an honest vendor selling mind control charms. I'm found buying anti-cultist charms, I'll be laughed out the city. Well, you'll be the one laughing when they're all enslaved to the absolute. Interesting. I wonder if what he's got is legit. Don't look at me like that. I'm not stupid. I know it's probably a scam, but what if it's not? If this guy has some way to avoid the powers of the Absolute, he's got more powerful magic than anyone else in the city, Absolute except us. Love mind control. You do well to buy a charm, sharpish. Have you fallen foul of a cultist curse? Been addled by an Absolutist incantation? Not sure? 
Best stock up on charms, just in case. Uh, what exactly are you selling? Protection, of course. Who knows the horrors these cultists have up their sleeves? Can't be too prepared. Well, let me see your wares. Okay, he's got a bunch of rings and necklaces. All right, nothing much. He's got 315 gold. How much of our wares can we sell? Not all of it. All right, let's sort by weight and get rid of some of it. What else have we got? We gotta make sure not to sell them anything we don't want to sell by accident. We've got a crap ton of daggers. What's he got? 33 gold left? And then we've got the murderous cuts. All right. Satisfaction guaranteed. Well, that's kind of a weird guarantee to make. Either somebody doesn't get controlled by the cultist or they do and then they have nothing to say to you because they're off doing the cultist's work. Uh, we have a Steel Watcher over here. Apparently it's considered theft to loot it, but there's also Marquisa and Duber standing guard over its body. I wouldn't touch that thing if you double drow dared me. What about you, Marquisa? Look at this thing, Duba. It's still kind of scary. Only not really. Hello? Okay. Bored, bored children messing around with things that are dangerous. Unsurprising. So if we head back this way, now we're heading back into the area uh, that we've already explored. Let's take a quick trip up to this vendor here, Fitz. Sell her some stuff. Need something for defense? Or maybe offense? Either way, I've got what you need. All right. Sell wares, very nice. Do we have wares on anyone else? We do not. All right, let's get out of here. My weapons won't be beat. Okay, uh, now where was the... The boulder's mouth is over here. All right, let's take a quick trip to the gate. And then from here, we'll head down to the Gazette. I'm trying to remember how to get there. Yes, it's over here, right? So we should be able to get a copy of the latest edition. You'll have all the answers you need once official investigations are concluded. Uh, Flo, Flo, Flo Hurlburl here seems to be investigating the Steel Watcher. Maybe we can give her an interview. I feel a lot safer now that I've seen that that thing can die, just like anything else. Okay. Where, now where can we get, there's like a, man, this place is so complicated. There's a town square kind of a deal where we could purchase a copy of the latest Gazette. Was it, no, it wasn't up here. God, this, this city is just so enormous. Was it over here around this? I can't remember. Somebody somewhere in a circle kind of area is selling. Yeah, here we go. The news hawker. I want, I want the latest copy. It should be edition 88, I believe. Hello again, Squire. Fancy a copy of today's edition? I do indeed, young man. Have a gander at that. Come back tomorrow if you fancy fresh news. All right, let's see what our uh, printed story looked like. Issue 90. All right, here we go. Let's see. Okay, Council mobilizes Steel Watch for funeral preparations. Archduke Gortash dead. Who can protect Baldur's Gate from the Absolute? Future of the Steel Watch, the mouth investigates Elfsong Tavern under rat invasion. Metal imports plummet as Steel Watch halts production. Steel Watch foundry decimated by dastardly sabotage. So, we've skipped, unfortunately, we seem to have skipped the edition that would, would have been the result of our meddling, which is very unfortunate. Hmm. All right, let's go over to the Gazette and interview the editor. I don't know how we get our hands on a copy of the one I'm interested in. Uh. Tash is dead. Should we get copies of the latest math? You know, as souvenirs. Stop that. I think it's up, up, up and around here. Yes, it's up and around here. Okay. I know this is like wasting a lot of time with me running around trying to get places, but I really want to see the reaction here. 
I'd love to read the edition. I think it's 88 or 89 that we need to read. But like yesterday or the day before yesterday, 87 was out and it wasn't what we were looking for. So I don't know how we get the copy that we are interested in. Lord Gortash's death. Well, well, let's go talk to the editor, see what he thinks. Maybe we can get a good reaction out of him. No more copies lying around for us to read. Let's see what he thinks. You're, yeah, so we foiled your little plot to smirch our name, and we killed your little uh, patron there. Oh, you again. Old news. I've got a dead duke to commemorate. Be on your way. Well, that's disappointing. All right, let's go back. Back to exploring. Uh, we go through the wall. And then down the stairs. Why'd you make it so big then? We've got our street artist. And then this area. We haven't really seen what's in here. So let's go check this out. Let's see what this building's about. No. So an amulet of absolutist rebuttal. Maybe an enchanted ring. We got the whole team with us, right? Yes, all five. All right. So over here we have... Flim's Cobblers. Flim's Cobblers. Walk in a pauper, strut out a duke. Interesting. And then back behind here is this area. This goes down to the tree, right? Yeah, we've been all along there. Okay. So next we want to go here. All right. Uh, let's check out the cobble shop. Interesting that it's Flim's Cobblers. Didn't we go to Flim's Cargo? Was that Flynn? Uh, yeah, there's Flim's Cobbler, and then there's Flim Cargo. Both were... Okay, so this may be related to Gortash. This may be a, uh, a Banist outpost. Let's see what Dravo Flim has to say. We're closed for business today. Apologies. Hmm. Our son, our beautiful boy, Enver, has been killed right before his oh. He was meant to be the Archduke, you know. Such senseless violence. Gortash's dad. He seems proud. We've actually found his parents. All right, let's see if he knew about his son's evil doings. Let's probe his mind. Wow, that is a low roll. Let's use inspiration and roll again. Wow, still barely made it. <sighs> Nothing. It's as though the inner workings of his mind have been wiped clean. Bizarre. What is that about? Um... Could try to trade with him, but he just said they're closed. You're Gortash's father, then. He was the image of me, and the best of me. Everything he accomplished. Gods, he made us so proud. Hmm. Well, whatever he knew was taken from him. I don't know if we're... I don't know if we know whether or not he was complicit in his son's crime, so it's not like we're going to assault or murder him. Um, we don't have a reason to do that. We'll check his ledger. The ledger of orders received and fulfilled at Flim's Cobbler Shop. After a moderate listing of jobs in and out, there's a large order for 26 pairs of Flaming Fist Scout Boots, due for delivery at Worms Rock at the end of the current 10-day. The order has been underlined three times, with a note in the margin that reads, Ty Mora's tits will never get this done in time. I, I mean, how generous. Hmm. Did he... Did he manipulate his parents? Did he wipe their memories for some reason? Certainly, he used the cargo area uh, as a as a uh, uh, an underwater do uh, dock to the Iron Throne. So maybe he just felt more secure having it in the family. You know, I don't really see anything else. She did she did have a perception check when she came in. I'm not sure what they noticed, and this must be his mother, Sally. Pardon us, sir. This house is in mourning. 
Our son, the city saviour and Vagortash was slain by absolutist conspirators. Gods, Gortash has a mother. I assumed he sprang fully formed from a lich's ass crack or something. <laughs> uh, I wonder if she's been wiped as well. Oh, now that is interesting. Squirms. These people are infected with the. Oh mess. God, he infected his parents. But something is off. Uh. Let's use our illithid powers to figure this out. You search her mind, but the psionic forces that control her are different. Split somehow. Your own consciousness slips into the gap. Help me. God, help me! Enver's ruined my mind. He's taken my body. I should have slammed the door in his face, but I let him in and he ran some kind of worm in our eyes. I'm here, but I can't speak. I can't act. I'm trapped. Good Lord. His evil new new bounds. Um, why would Enver do this to you? He said he wanted to make us powerless. Still bitter after all these years, but we did what was best for him, for all of us. We had debts, world-ending debts, trying to keep this cursed shop afloat. Dangerous lenders who said they'd bury us all if we didn't pay. Then a warlock offered us a pretty penny for Enver's service. He was a smart boy. Too smart. It was give him up and all of us live or refuse and die. What choice did we have? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you had a choice, right? Uh, any any loving parents fa faced with that would give up, would sell the shop, sell their inventory, flee the city if they had to, to keep their son. You had every choice. You sold your son to a warlock. Unforgivable. We got good coin for him. Closed our debts and all of us kept our lives. Enver included. You may disagree, Enver did, but we don't deserve this, this torment. You're the first person who's heard the real me in months. She's not wrong. What she did was horrible, but... Eternal enslavement in your own mind? Yikes. Hmm. I can put you out of your misery, if you like. There has to be another way. I deserve to live again. I deserve my own life. Hmm. There's nothing I can do for you, at least for now. I'm sorry. There has to be. I can't live like this. I'm trapped. Trapped. Okay, uh, I think we leave. Wait, wait! Your tadpole lashes and recoils. The connection is broken. Come again soon. That is a pretty horrific fate, but we don't have a way to help them other than ending their misery, putting them down. Yikes. That's pretty rough. I wonder what that perception check was for. Magnifying glass, poet. There's boots back here. Oh, the portrait of Gortash might have a secret. Maybe that's what she noticed, because it's interactable. Uh, Karlock has something to say here. Let's see. So, Gortash's parents sold him to a warlock. Why does that sound so familiar? I've got no interest in empathizing with the fuck. But maybe what he did to me was some kind of mirror of what happened to him. 
When you get fucked up, you fuck up right back. But you didn't. That's not what you chose. You chose to be a hero. Uh, let's interact with this portrait of Gortash and see what it does. Big Gortash fans. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure what else we can do here, so we're going to leave. I wonder what happens if you meet them before you take on Gortash. Like, if there's a different... something else that can happen there. Let's continue this away. Gloves, a sponge. Ormont and Tuglehorn. I'm on my break. Let me have some peace, won't ya? All right. What about you, Tuglehorn? Hard life working these docks. But steady at least. Always something that needs hauling. All right, fair enough for you. What else we got going on here? Uh, this building over here is Old Garlow's. Warning. The property of the individual known as Old Garlow has been deemed unsafe for habitation under City Bylaw 42A. Do not enter. Very interesting. All right, so it's uninhabited. We can go ahead and make our way inside. Uh, city laws will not deter us uh, when an individual's personal liberty is not at stake. Not a half wit. Oh. You're Looks like there's some squatters. Valiant. Adventurers? And I'm glad to call you friend. <laughs> oh, these are the hag... Uh, this is the hag support group. Interesting. You know what? I do remember the name Old Harlow now. All right, let's check the uh, mailbox. Notice of condemnation. Dear Sir, as our previous correspondences have gone unanswered, a Builder's Guild representative was forced to enter your property in order to inspect the premises. Your property has been found in gross violation of several key safety regulations. See City Bylaws 38A through 39C for their complete list. Until steps are taken to correct this, we're condemning the property known as Old Garlow's Place, effective immediately under Bylaw 42A. Should you wish to contest this, please contact your local Builder's Guild representative. Kind guards, ardent low, Council of Four Liaison. Okay, so this is the place where the anti-hag support group is meeting. How did they get in? Did they lock the door on us? They've got some bookshelves blocking this entrance here, but we can easily get in by picking the lock. I don't see a reason not to. Yeah, all right. Let's, uh, let's hop in the front. Good. I might get some sleep if I took a crack on the knock. All right, let's go in and meet the anti-hag support group. Another step forward. Do you did you hear someone giggling? I did hear someone giggling. What is that about? Uh, we got a traveler's chest here. What else is going on in here? This giggling is very unnerving. It's got to be a hag, right? We might have a fight on our hands here. Nothing in here. Folding screen. A mirror. She's got to be on the second floor, I think. Broken cabinet. Some vases. Does have some artwork, at least. That's worth something. You're clever. Valiant. Okay, here we go. An intruder. These people are under my protection. I'll not let you harm them. Hearken to my words, wicked creature. Return to the pit of evil from whence you came. Uh, <laughs> uh, calm down, calm down. I, I seek no trouble. Don't listen. Who knows what spells it weaves around us? Quickly, cleric. Helm, protector of all, grant me the power to ignite this creature's flesh and burn its bones to ash. 
Be gone, monster. Your hag mother holds no power here. Uh... A hag is after you, right? I can help. I fought one before. All right, this is an important role. Let's see how we do. Five. Plus 17. Success. Wait. Clyde smells no lie. Then you speak truth. You fought a hag before. At ease, everyone. We may have found ourselves an ally. Forgive the paranoia. We're being hunted by a vile and wicked hag. We feared you, her minion. She's already hexed one of us, and any of us could be next. Hmm. Why is she hunting you? Because we dared to do the impossible. We dared to fight back. You see, all of us here have fallen victim to a hag's vicious ways. But instead of succumbing to despair, we rose above it. Thanks to Marina, our leader. Together, we've been helping others who've suffered at the claws of a hag. Only, Marina's been hexed by the very hag who now hunts us. Wow, Marina. <laughs> I know her. She was captured by Auntie Ethel. You're the one that saved her. The one that ventured to the depths of Ethel's lair. I can hardly believe it. You look so... normal. By Helm, perhaps there is hope. If anyone can help Marina, it's you. She's upstairs. But be warned. She's not as you remember her. Interesting. So, Mayrina, we thought, was stupid and ungrateful. It appears she got over the ungrateful part, but maybe it's still a little bit on the stupid side. Deciding to help others fight the hag? Like, it's not as if you... It's not as if she defeated them. We did. So I think we know who's giggling now. Mayrina's upstairs, cursed to giggle forever, perhaps. Let's do a quick check with these other members. I clearly lack the power to keep the hag and her hexes away from Mayrina. Uh, I mean, you protected Mayrina until now. That's worth something. You are kind. But I serve Helm. And failing to keep this hex from Mayrina is unforgivable. In both his eyes and mine. Well, I mean, I have the power to fight a god, so I may be able to help. Any idea how to remove the hex? None. The magic originates from a hag's twisted lair, of that I'm sure. But as to its cure, Helm has not revealed it to me. Okay. Uh, well, they seem... 52 hit points, they seem powerful enough to survive a fight, and may help us, depending on what the hag brings to the fight. If she has her sisters with her, or summons a bunch of, you know, people to help her. I wonder, now when we fought Auntie Ethel, uh, we did kill her, but she said she'd be back, right? She'd just reappear in, in the Fae and then make her way back. I wonder if she's here now. Or if the person that she was writing letters to is the one that we're dealing with. What else have we got? Some mugwort. We could take... An antidote we'll always take. I mean, we've defeated... We defeated Raphael. I don't think a hag is gonna give us much trouble. Uh, now, three hags working together are much more powerful. A coven is a much more dangerous proposition, but even so, we should be okay. Let's check this ink-spattered journal. This journal is written in a sloppy, ink-spattered hand and dotted with drawings of stick figures. Day one, Clegg met some nice people. They didn't laugh when Clegg told them about the red caps and the rats and the hag. Clegg thinks he's finally made friends. Day 10, the landlord is angry. He says all the weird things happening are our fault, but they're not. The landlord doesn't care. He says we have to leave. My friends are sad, which means Cled is sad. Cled wants to help. Day 11, Cled found a place to stay. It belonged to old Garlow, but he doesn't live there anymore. My friends are really happy. They thanked Cled. Cled is happy he did a good job. All right. Now, I wonder if one of the three of them, Cled, uh, Adriel here, or Jarlo might not actually Jatlo might not actually be the hag in disguise, keeping 
uh, an eye on these people and tormenting them from inside the group. Let's check in with Kled. Please help Lady Marina. She's nice and kind and sweet to Kled. Uh, to uh, everyone. Hmm. Okay, so possibly that that little hiccup there in the speech. Possibly this is a hag masquerading as Cled. Possibly Cled has romantic feelings for Marina. Let's let's delve into that. Maybe this will give us a hint. You think Marina's sweet? I found her to be more sour, to be honest. Really? Then maybe it's only Cled she is sweet to. You and Marina sound close. Friends only. Lady Marina is too pretty and kind for the likes of Cled. But if you can't stop the Hex, Cled will take care of her. Feeding, cheering, scratching behind her ears. Cled will do his best. Okay, so it appears our hobgoblin Cled has sexual and romantic feelings for sheep Marina. A little, uh problematic i guess a little bit yeah, it's very hard to get consent for that kind of relationship any idea how to remove the hex no cled isn't good at hag magic can't help sweet lady Marina. Mm. i no longer believe this is a hag in disguise let's leave <laughs> let's see what else we've got here oh there's a wall safe what's in here not for communal use it seems Best show some oh, okay, that's for the group. Fair enough. I I didn't think really that they would that this was their thing to be upset about. What do we got here? Pale mint and cabbage. All right, let's send that to camp. By the way, uh, we have three thousand three hundred and fifty-two camp supplies, which divided by forty is something like let's see, forty goes into thirty-two uh, eight times, right? And then that leaves over 152, so almost 86 long rests available if we want them. Wooden desk, nothing here. Uh, there may be maybe a reward in the safe for us if we help. We'll keep exploring, looking around. I do want to talk to... Oh, there's a wooden hatch here. Interesting. I do want to talk to Jatlo. Convenient. You showing up like this. You may have the others fooled, but I shall be keeping a close eye on you. Hmm. Mayrina's an... Well, I don't know about old friend, but I've met Mayrina long ago and helped her. I wouldn't hurt her. Then stop wasting my... Okay, great. He's angry and upset that we aren't helping right away. That's fine. We want to examine the rest of this place. All right, it's largely empty. Let's go up to the second floor and see Marina, what she's been turned into, how she's been altered, this hex. Uh, I do see rotten floorboards here. That worries me. So I think before we fall on them, uh, maybe we should just smash them so we don't accidentally... Well, we'll just keep them in mind that they're there, maybe. Burlap sack, a wooden trunk. Hmm. Uh, we can easily get out onto the roof here if we want, but I don't see a reason to. Okay. So we have Connor Vinderblad. He appears to have been cursed. And then we have Mayrina as well. Let's check in with Connor. Mayrina's husband. Oh, this is Mayrina's husband. Right. She took her she took him with her. Wow. Kept him all this time, huh? Alright, let's uh let's speak with animals here. And somehow we've picked up a key. Where is that? That was odd. I don't see it. All right, let's let's check in with Marina. <laughs> Damn it! Ah! 
Mayrina, it's me. I'm here to help you, all right? Listen to... to me. The doll. The doll. Okay. Doll, got it. The doll. Fine. The doll. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. <laughs> It's a little bit of silliness here, although I'm sure the fight won't won't be uh, quite as lighthearted when the hag shows up after we foil her nasty plot. What else we got going on here? Out on the roof. Okay. So we've got this giggling voodoo doll over here that we have to deal with. Uh, there was also the hatch to the basement, which we haven't examined. I wonder if we should save this for a bit later. Check out the roof, maybe? Is there anything up here? Oh, there's a little attic. Interesting. Okay. What is this? Roughly cut ham. In the heavy chest. Pink and green leaf dye. Bit of gold. Alright. Anything else interesting here? We do have a door here in the attic. That's interesting. Yeah, nothing great. Man, that laughing doll is creepy, man. This just leads out to the little, like, rooftop area here. Some sort of, like, rooftop gazebo or porch. Patio. So it would have been a nice area when it was first built, it seems. Not seeing anything of interest here. Except the Autumn Crocus. Alright. Um, I think we will save the doll for last. Well, but then if we go down the hatch, it might be a, a, a hag's lair or a secret entrance of some sort. Alright. Let's interact with the doll now and see what happens. Let's examine it. So, it has bad omen. There's something suspicious about this doll. It is cursed. So, I can... I can interact with it. Well, I can, I guess, pick it up? I don't know what happens if I just click on it. Something suspicious about the doll. Maybe we remove curse on this thing. How many of these do we have? We don't have any, so it would need to be a spell slot from Shadowheart, I think. Um, I think she has remove curse in her spell book. Uh, is it always prepared for her? No. What is that, a third level? Yeah, okay. Well, let's prepare this. I apparently had a slot available for it. Let's see what happens if we cast Remove Curse on the doll. It was the Dragonborn. The Dragonborn Hex. You removed my Hex. Ah. Uh, that's annoying. I thought it was one of them. I wanted to play a little longer. Auntie likes her toys broken. She's not going to be happy I had to get my hands dirty. Uh. Yeah. Tell me who you are. Now, we don't need to ready ourselves. Tell me who you are. Now. I don't matter. Only Auntie does. They want to hurt Auntie. They have the book. I will die before I let anyone touch a hair on her head. Hmm. The hag charmed you. You don't know what you're saying. Ha. Huh. You have no idea how wrong you are. I have worshipped her for decades past. And will for decades more. All right. Well, unfortunately, this guy's going to have to die. We can't get any information. You treacherous bastard, I'll kill you myself, says the girl downstairs. Um, okay, so if we take a look at him, he wasn't a dragonborn. He was a redcap, I think. Let's see. Level 5 redcap. Well, killing him's going to be pretty easy. Ethel's twisted blessing. 
Red Cap has an additional 40 hit points. Their strength and constitution scores are increased. All right. Merry Revelry. Bloodlust is subdued when there are traces of alcohol in a target's blood. Has advantage on attack roll. I mean, this is not going to be difficult. We could smash the floorboards on him, too. Let's just, uh, let's just take him out. No choice. Okay. Uh, the diva over here. Let's get a wrathful smite going on this guy. And that takes care of him. Okay, so we've helped them out. But the hag is still at large. We have to go talk to them. All right, let's go downstairs. <clears throat> Excuse me, we'll obviously loot Jatlo here and then check in with the survivors. Uh, we have a note. My darling. My darling, Auntie has sent you a little present. A hex doll just for Marina. Use it to scare her and her little cronies off. Or butcher them, I don't care. Just find that book. Or I'll rip out your lungs and feed them to your brothers. Lots of love, Auntie. Yeah, Auntie's back. I think that must be what's in the safe. I don't know what they were talking about. And we've got Ethel's lair key. Very nice. And a potion of superior healing. Equally nice. Let's get downstairs and ask them about this book. And if they have any idea about the location of her lair. Alright, let's start with Kled. The Dragonborn was Kled's friend. Why? Why would he hurt Lady Marina? Oh, not the sharpest tool in the shed, are you, Kled? He was only pretending to be her friend. It was all a ploy. But Lady Marina was kind to him. To us. Anyone who hurts Lady Marina is Kled's enemy. But anyone who helps her is Kled's friend. Thank you. All right, you're welcome, Kled. I hope now that she's back in a form which can speak and think, maybe she'll... Well, she's still got her husband that she's dragging around. Ugh, yikes. What has he got? He's got the smelly attribute. Character is smelly. All right. <laughs> Let's check in with Marina. It's been a while. That lying, thieving, scaly little shit. Thanks for knifing the bastard. Man, you... Thanks twice you've saved me. I'm starting to think you're my guardian angel. Maybe you're not as stupid as I didn't give you credit for. Uh, you do have some mascara problems. Um, you made an adorable sheep. Thanks. But my mouth tastes like mutton. And I'm itching in hard to reach places. I'm gonna make the witch that did this pay. And I have the means to do it. This group is made of survivors. People like me who've been hurt by hags. I brought them together to fight back. We tracked a hag to the city, but lost her trail. Right after she snatched a little girl. Oh. Hmm. Uh, any connection to our old friend Ethel? Oh, I bloody hope not. I see her enough in my dreams. No, Ethel is dead, thanks to you. But this one is no less of a nightmare. The moment I started investigating the missing girl, I felt the hag's eye on me. Next thing I was sprouting wool and bleating up a storm. Hmm. Let's see. You were going to give your kid to a hag willingly. Maybe this is the same? When someone tells you day in, day out, that you'd be a useless mother, well, you start to believe it. Who knows what she's done to this woman? Look, I know you're busy with big-time heroics, but we need your help. A child's life is on the line, and her mother is the best lead we've got. I'm in. Thank you. With you at our side, that hag won't know what hit her. Check the safe in the back. I've done my homework on hags since we last tangled with Ethel. Take whatever you need. I know it by heart anyway. Laura was knocking about Basilisk Gate at the Flaming Fist's headquarters. Good luck. Okay. 
Uh, Mayrina thanked us for helping to root out the spy in their midst. You receive the Staff of Interruption. Let's see. Oh, it comes with Counterspell, you guys. Ooh, that's nice. Hmm. So other than that, it appears to be a normal quarter staff. It's a plus two, which isn't bad, but getting counter staff is fantastic. Who would we give that to, though? Who's going to counter spell? It would have to be Shadowheart. And she's got better stuff to be using. I mean, I guess... If we're in a scenario with really bad spells, maybe I could maybe I could equip it on her instead of what she's using, but I don't think so. We'll send it to her for now anyway. Uh, actually, you know who could use it? Astarian. He's got a decent spell save DC. Good. And Scarlet Remittance is very nice, but that's the only thing he's using it for. So maybe actually we'll send this over to. Astarian. He might be able to get a counter spell off. I'm not sure if he can cast level 5 spells. I, I don't know if he needs a spell slot or not, but... Well, let's find out, actually. Let's, um... Let's have him... So he's got... Yeah, he's got these two equipped right now. Let's equip this. Can he now cast counter spell? Uh... How would that work? Level 5 Abjuration spell, but sometimes it doesn't require a spell slot. No, it doesn't look like he has it, so I don't think he can. I don't think- I think he does need a spell slot here. Or does he? Action. Yeah, I don't see counter spell here. I don't think he can do it. All right. We'll send this back to Shadowheart for now. Never a dull moment. All right. Uh, we'll check in real quick with Adriel, and then we'll loot the safe and head down to the uh, the basement. This is all my fault. Marina was hexed mere days after the Dragonborn joined us. Why didn't I see it? Hmm. Hags and their agents are liars and cheats by nature. That's no excuse. I know what they're like. Yet still, I welcome the Dragonborn with open arms. Mayrina was right about you. Thank you for saving her when I couldn't. All right, you're welcome. In the safe, which we can now freely access, we have Ashes of Dried Feyflower. Ooh, Hagsbane. In the land of Prismere, where fair Zil Zibilna reigns, they had their share of hag trouble. Oh yes, they had it in spades. Hags have a special predilection for children and the power inherent to innocence. Disrupting one in the consumption of that power could be cataclysmic for the hag. Hmm. Okay. We are going to need uh, our friend uh, Gale to make that for us, perhaps. We also have a tear-stained journal and a hunter's guide to hags. This book seems part diary, part scientific study. Detailed diagrams of hags from green to anise to dune fill the margins. This page is written in a harsh sloping scrawl, sentences blurred by what look like tears. Just a little longer. All right. Girl is dead. We were close. So close to perfecting it. Another day and she would have been safe. So just hang on. But we were too late. It was too much for the mother. I found her swinging from the rafters this morning. Elm, forgive me for not saving her. Forgive me for not saving her child. Two years old and eaten alive by a hag. What is wrong with this world? But it doesn't have to be this way. I, I'm on to something. I know it. Hags have powerful digestive systems. It's, it's what allows them to turn a child into a hag. However, their gut flora is incredibly sensitive to certain alchemical agents. With the right ingredients and Helm on my side... I could theoretically force emesis, causing the hag to vomit up a stolen child. I, I both pray this works, and that I'll never have to use it. Detailed instructions follow, and how do we make what the author calls the hag's bane? Okay. We can actually maybe make two of those with Gale. Uh, we also have a hunter's guide to hags. 
An excerpt from A Hunter's Guide to Hags by the legendary dwarven ranger Amandine Hartwood. Text in this excerpt has been underlined several times. All but the most arrogant of hags from night to boor know that death is a possibility. As such, they won't hesitate to bend the rules of the material plane to escape death's clutches, returning stronger than ever. To do this, hags use, of all things, the common and humble mushroom. By imbuing these spore-producing fungi with her essence, she can endlessly revive herself. Neither blade nor bow will do these fungi lasting harm. The very twisted magic that heals the hag defends them. Instead, fire is your ally. Burn the mushrooms to ashes and your blade will strike the hag's heart true. But a warning, Hunter. Even in death, a hag is dangerous. Be quick, be swift, and be deadly. Okay, a couple of interesting hints there. One, burn the mushrooms. Two, strike her with hag's bane to force her to vomit up a child that she has consumed. A trap. Someone doesn't like visitors. All right, so there's more than meets the eye here in Old Harlow's basement including a blast mine. We'll go ahead and disarm this and then I'll call the episode here. Oh boy, there's a lot of them. Okay, uh, so guys, a pretty successful episode. We found and rescued Marina, learned about the hag causing problems here in the city and have a set of tools to use to destroy them. When next time we return, uh, we'll investigate the rest of this basement and then we'll go hunting for Lauren uh, the mother of the stolen child, to hopefully get a bead on where this hag's lair might be. Perhaps, perhaps the uh, the park keeper that we learned about earlier and whose home we were reluctant to invade without a good reason. Anyway, that's going to be it for this time. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.